But no matter what happens on the uh, patrol that day, you always have to go back to the base, uh, make some food, refuel. You're going to be on another patrol tomorrow, um, as well as be on guard duty um, most of the night as well. I've run out of gas today, so now we're cooking on wood. Nun's doing the cooking. There he goes over there. What are you laughing at, Nun? Oh, this fucking lorry came off a cliff, <laughs> so I ran down. Fuck, now I was going to survive this. And they did, so I fucked off. And that's another family video that's been <laughs> stuffed up by Nun. Jesus Christ. Before I videotape, I should just use black and nasty tape over his mouth. Save me time. We've got the, pave, the uh, potatoes cooking over here. We're giving it a go. Don't know if it'll work. So we've got the oven. We've put the potatoes in uh, tin foil, as you can see. But we've put water at the bottom as well. So they're half boiling, half steaming, half something. But we'll see how they come out. Should be alright. But I can't stick around because um, I have to be on stag in about 15 minutes. Which is uh, very boring. But, uh, so being on stag meant you were on uh, guard duty. So Manzira had three uh, guard towers um, and you'd probably spend about three hours uh, on guard duty, one hour on every tower. And then you might have a couple of hours off and then back on. So you never got a full night's sleep or anything like that. You just managed to grab a couple of hours uh, at a time um, and then back on to patrol the next morning. But every now and then, nature did surprise us. Well, as you can see, we got a hell of a storm coming. It's already started to drizzle and rain. Um, we've seen the storm coming from about an hour away. Uh, big lightning strikes, but it's really building up now. Uh, a non-stop barrage of lightning um, going on all around. But some quite impressive strikes which light up, light up the whole green zone for a second or two. Um, like that. And this is literally all the way around us. And I'm not feeling hell of a safe. I'm sitting in a metal sanger um, with a metal chair to sit on. Holding a metal rifle in the middle of uh, probably the biggest lightning storm I've ever seen. So uh, <laughs> I think the Taliban's the least of my dangers at the moment. I think I might just be done in by lightning at this rate. Um, or massive strike but hell of an impressive. It's a pretty the camera can't focus at night because um, it seems to be a bit blurry on the screen. And there's the thunder rain's getting harder obviously I don't know if you'll be able to hear the rain through the microphone but here it comes we've got a patrol out at the moment they left about 15 minutes ago which uh, I mean, it couldn't be worse timing, really, because they were going to get absolutely drenched. Um, and like I say, they're all carrying metal. Half of them have, you know, air, metal aerials sticking out their backs. Um, and we're on the high ground here, so I don't think it's the safest. Um, but it is a hell of an impressive sight, actually. And there it goes again. Well, I don't know if you can see that, but... Uh this is the loo. I'm sitting on the toilet right now. If I had a fishing rod, I could do some bloody fishing. Had a big uh, storm last night. Just going to the sand, right? But that's our toilet, which is literally sitting in the middle of the paddle. And that's the gym, which is a uh, half underwater as well. So as you can see conditions today are, are absolutely fantastic. Not really what you'd expect from Afghanistan in the desert. And then back on patrol. There goes Jonah with the 66. We're just going to enroll those uh, packs as biometrically. Certainly. <laughs> Come on, Scott. Hey! Yeah. 
We're in contact here. The A and A are battering us with poppy heads. <laughs> right. Yeah. And we're moving off. Bone jackalaka with the new wheel around. Bone jackalaka to the new style around. <laughs> <laughs> They've been having fun oh, yeah. saying chocolate putu pup. So there's the putu pup we're making. Pupu dick. Pupu dick. Chocolate putu pup. Chocolate when I know it's all around. <laughs> oh, that is a fucking wallop. <laughs> the fucking table's gonna step it up. Hey. Oh, what are you trying to hit? Calibrating on the spoggy. <laughs> My aim was Calibrating, well. look! Fucking look at your grouping! I need to come left, three. <laughs> left one. Direct there. Hey! Spot on. Just what I wanted. And this is what you do when there are about five million flies that just keep on coming, no matter how many ah. you kill. And it's also quite entertaining. Oh, I'm sure I had him. <laughs> Can! <laughs> You can tell the jimpy gunner. <laughs> well, it's the 15th of May, 2012. Um, I'm sitting on Sanger 1. Just a quick brief, I haven't uh, made a diary input in a while. Um, yeah, not a lot has happened because we've been down in Manzera, which is usually quite a quiet place, um, as opposed to being up in Rahim on the patrol roster, uh, where you're pretty much going out into the green zone and getting into fights all the time. So I've been pretty quiet for the last five days. We'll probably be quiet for the next five days to a week before we go back there, but then things are going to warm up again. Um, so we, you can expect more action uh, footage then, uh, particularly with the ops that we've got planned. Um, <clears throat> the only news we've had really up to date, Chetley, the lad uh, from our multiple, who stood on the IED about a week and a half ago now. Um, his uh, right foot is going to have to be amputated. Um, about 20 centimeters above the ankle. We had hoped that he'd keep the foot, but the docs haven't been able to save it. So that's going to have to go, which, um, you know, has been a little bit of a, a, bit of a downer because we thought uh, that he was going to get away with it, but um, obviously he hasn't. There have been a lot of explosions in Crescent Wood, um, so the place is obviously littered with IEDs. Um, and if we continue going the way we are going, going into the green zone so often, um, I don't see Chetley being the last of us to stand on an IED. I think there will be more IED strikes unfortunately by the end of tour and they seem to be putting in bigger and bigger IEDs at the moment so I think the next one you know you're not just going to lose your leg below the knee you'll lose both legs both legs and an arm or or be killed outright um, but hopefully that doesn't happen um, and then uh, today an Afghan local policeman who works with us here uh, was ambushed and killed uh, another policeman that was with him was uh, abducted by the Taliban um, and I wouldn't like to be him because you can just imagine what sort of treatment he'll get from the Taliban. Um, his head will probably be posted back to us or something uh, quite horrific like that. Um, and three weapons were stolen at the same time. So the Taliban today have two more AK-47s and a PKM which is a Russian general purpose machine gun. Um, so not a good day all, all in all. Uh, but I suppose any day where your lads end up safe is a good day and our lads are all safe today so that's good. So some more of the usual patrolling uh, before the next incident happened. Talk about channeling. Huh? Talk about channeling. Jeez. No. Fuck me. This place is like a rat run. It is um, Friday, the 25th of May, 2012. Um, had a very, very interesting day. Um, was out on a big patrol this morning um, into Ahmadzai. We went right to the uh, bazaar, right in the middle. Um, day didn't start so well, went out, um, got to Crescentwood, 
had a bit of trouble crossing it so we uh, turned to the left followed Crescent Wood for a bit found another wood tried to go through there and had the uh, the second IED strike on our multiple in three weeks uh, this time it was the cover man Corporal Jonah um, Corporal Jones we call him Jonah um, Hawkins stepped over it he got into the water Jonah stepped on it um, device detonated um, we gave him uh, first aid um, very lucky he got away almost scot-free he got some um, shrapnel in the lower leg and foot and probably broke his ring finger on his left hand so considering that he stood on an IED he got away very lightly he was uh, supposed to go on R&R &R in five days so he's gone on R&R &R a little bit early and he's going to have a, a long R&R &R and probably get um, some payout uh, from his insurance um, but it does show there are a hell of a lot of IEDs in there you know out of our multiple we've had two strikes in three weeks um, and we're going to be here for about another 20 weeks so we're going to have to be hell of a careful things aren't looking good on the, uh, the IED front um, <clears throat> we carried on pushing forward though after we got him to the helicopter and sent him uh, to Bastion for medical attention uh, we continued pushing forward <clears throat> Recky were out there and a few other call signs uh, they got contacted uh, quite a bit uh, Recky did a good job smashing them back um, and they found one dead insurgent he had been shot in the neck so at least we got one today um, and from ICOM we may have got a second one um, my multiple pushed into the bazaar itself it was all closed all the shutters were down um, no one was there um, I thought there'd be a massive IED threat but thank God we didn't find anything there um, the boss was busy spray painting um, the Grindir Guards colours on, on a wall of a shop and he got opened up on with the PKM um, and you could see the rounds sort of splashing off the wall behind him so it was quite close uh, and, and quite accurate on him um, <clears throat> then we also got contacted a guy jumped up from uh, a doorway about 100 metres away uh, jumped through the doorway, turned on us with a PKM open fire um, he had about six guys return fire on him in quite spectacular fashion um, and I had three head cams today I, rec I recorded about four hours of footage got back here and I've got footage of okay getting Jonah to the helicopter everything like that um, but then going all the way to the bazaar being in the bazaar all the way back from the bazaar but for some reason the 30 seconds of us returning fire and smashing this guy in the doorway is missing and this is about the third time it's happened I keep on taking head cams uh, into contact getting into gleaming contacts getting back here and having everything except the part you want which is getting um, a little bit frustrating um, we're out again tomorrow another big op and op archer uh, with Recky as well so we'll see how that goes but um, yeah things are very very kinetic at the moment it's going to be a hell of a long summer um, and hopefully we can stay away from those IEDs but it seems like the Taliban in, you know, instead of making huge charges, 20 kilo charges, which we normally find, they're now putting smaller charges into the ground, um, which I actually don't mind. You know, you might lose a foot or maybe your lower leg, but you're not going to, unless you're unlucky and stand on one of the big ones out there, uh, it looks like you won't be, you know, a double or triple amputee.